Hello everyone, slightly different video, no cooking today, um, but we are going to talk about food. I'm going to answer a lot of the questions I've seen um, throughout my time making content, whether it's like on YouTube, on TikTok, uh, just various comments I see, various questions I see, mainly about me. I might answer some like generic food questions, but it's mainly about me. And then also a while back, I asked people to submit their questions and I saw those as well. So we're going to go through them as well. And as you're watching this, through this video, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, feel free to comment them. I will be more than happy to either make a second video or just respond to it myself. So the first question is probably the one that I feel like I see the most. And that is, how did I get into cooking? And like, where did I learn how to cook? Uh, so to start off, I'm completely self-taught. I haven't had any like formal training, never went to culinary school, never worked in any professional kitchens. Um, I'm completely self-taught. As for how I got started, so I started cooking around the age of like 13. I think I was around 13. Um, I was always interested in like flavors. Like even as a kid, I would like combine sauces. Like um, when I would eat steak, I would always combine like steak sauce, sriracha, ketchup, mayonnaise. Like I would just do that. And I didn't know it was an actual thing um, at the time, but I would just like do it because I thought it was fun and I enjoyed like trying out new flavors, right? But around the age of 13, I started getting interested in uh, making food and just cooking because I grew up with a single parent, um, a single parent who had to work like really long hours. So she didn't have a lot of time to cook like every like she didn't cook every day right she also didn't know how to cook but she wasn't able to cook every day so she would make a lot of the same things or she would make a lot of one thing on her days off and then i would eat that throughout the week uh during dinner and around the age of 13 i started getting to the point where i was like i'm kind of sick of this you know i want variety in my dinner and stuff like that so i wanted to learn how to make food so one day I literally just watched an episode of, on Food Network of Rachel Ray's 30 Minute Meals. This was before like, it was really common to have Wi-Fi at home or the internet at home, so I couldn't just like Google anything. Also, YouTube wasn't a thing yet, so I couldn't just like YouTube recipes. I literally sat in front of the TV during the show, had a piece of paper, and just wrote down literally as she was going throughout the show, I just wrote it all down, and then I asked, um, a family member who was staying with us at the time to take me to the grocery store, buy all the ingredients, and then she helped me cook everything. And it was a, um, it was chicken teriyaki with grilled pineapple spears and a honey coleslaw. I think that was the recipe. I just remember chicken teriyaki and pineapple. Um, if I can find the recipe, if it still exists on the internet, I will put it up. <laughs> but that was my first time. And it was funny because I completely undercooked the chicken. I followed the recipe, but I don't think I had the temperature up. So the first time I ever cooked anything, I almost served uncooked chicken. We cut it first before serving, and it was like basically raw in the center. So, so you know, not the greatest start. But that was the first time I ever cooked anything, and it really, and I really enjoyed it. And that ultimately led me to just keep trying uh, new recipes, and I would keep doing that. I would like go in front of the TV, write down the recipes, and try it until um, high school whenever the internet was more common and also I had I was able to drive so I started going to Barnes and Noble and looking at cookbooks and I started really like developing and learning and practicing my culinary skills uh, after school and high school I just had fun with it that's all I cared about and yeah that's basically how I started and I just kept doing that until today next question uh, kind of in the same vein is what's my favorite thing to cook or slash eat um, this is kind of a, not a hard question, but I don't really know how to answer this because for me anyways, when it comes to my favorite thing, I, it depends on my mood and also depends on what I've had recently. So I'm not the type of person who could eat one thing over and over and over again. I kind of like variety. So if I had a lot of like Vietnamese food recently, then I might not want, I might not say my favorite thing to eat is a Vietnamese dish. Or if I had a lot of like, um, America, like burgers recently, I probably won't talk about burgers. So it really depends on my mood, but I think overall, one of my favorite things to eat <clears throat> or that I, I could see myself eating and I get tired of is probably sushi. 
I honestly love raw fish. It's really good. Um, specifically salmon and um, uni, which is sea urchin roe. Those are my two favorite things to eat or at sushi restaurants. And um, I really, I enjoy making like salmon sashimi at home as well. So that's probably my favorite thing to eat. That's for my favorite thing to cook. Um, so I'm, I'm Vietnamese, but I'm not the best at making Vietnamese dishes. I didn't really grow up making them. And nowadays I am not too familiar with like a lot of Vietnamese dishes. I know I make a few, but during the, the pandemic, I got really into making pho and I kind of spent my time making, not my own recipe, but like a variation of recipes that I've uh, seen online, that I talked to my family about who know how to make pho. And I kind of crafted my own pho recipe that I really like and that I prefer when I make it um, at home. So I think that's one of my favorite things to cook because it's, it's just a lot of fun. Um, you know, when it comes to roasting the aromatics, um, boiling boiling the uh, the broth, serving the broth, taking care of it, making sure it's good, um, kind of like watching over it. I think that's like one of my favorite things to cook just because of the time and effort it takes. And it's just like a lot of love put into, put into that broth. And so I would say that's one of my favorite things to cook just because of the procedure. Another thing would probably be shrimp tempura bentos. So I love making bentos. I think they're really fun to make um, and they're really cute to make, but specifically shrimp tempura bentos. I don't know, I just like deep frying things. <laughs> so shrimp tempura bentos are really, really fun to, for me to make. And you pair them with like rice and um, like a tamagoyaki, which is like a rolled egg omelet. Um, some other things, some miso soup. <laughs> I just really think those are really fun to make. Uh, I, I, I don't really do shrimp, I don't really do bentos anymore. Um, I really should, but I would say shrimp to pork bentos are up there as well. So those are probably, probably my two favorite things. What about my least favorite thing? Um, so my least favorite thing to eat, uh, it's bitter melon. I don't know if this is eaten like outside of like Southeast Asian cuisine, but bitter melon, anything with bitter melon, I immediately dislike. Uh, there was a dish that my family always made that was, it was like just cut up bitter melon and then they like cooked it with an egg and they made like a bitter melon omelet basically. I hated that. Every time they made it as a kid, I, I like dumped it in so much soy sauce and stuff like that. I like hated that so much. That's my least favorite thing to cook. Honestly, I can't think of one right now. I enjoy all types of cooking and challenging myself in the kitchen. Yeah, I can't think of any. I, I probably like when the time comes or like if in the moment, I'll be like, man, this is really annoying to cook, but I can't think of any at the moment. As this video goes on, if I remember, I'll go back to it and we'll cut to like me remembering. So those were like kind of like more generic questions about me. Now I'm now we're gonna go into the category of like uh, specifically cooking content and like my, my videos and stuff like that. So um, let's see, how did I get into uploading cooking content? So the first video I ever uploaded was, I think 2018, 2019. Um, one of my friends was just like, Alex, you're always posting your cooking and your food on Instagram. Why don't you like record yourself doing it? I feel like people would enjoy watching that. And at the, and at the time I was like really insecure about my cooking. I was like, no one's gonna wanna watch that. No one cares about my cooking. I'm not good enough to cook, stuff like that. Um, but I kind of just like did it one day um, I was inspired, and then the format that I decided to do was inspired by Binging with Babish, that cooking channel. I was a huge fan of, of his channel and like specifically the fact that he made food from TVs and movies. I really liked that concept instead of just like, oh, I'm just making a recipe that you can eat at home or like just making a recipe you can eat at night. It's specifically like recreating stuff that you see on TV and movies. And I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to do something similar like that, but I wasn't really into TVs and movies. I was more into anime at the time and I played a lot of video games. So that's what I decided. So within that same niche, I, the first video I ever uploaded was a Fallout, a recipe from the Fallout official cookbook, which was, um, I think it was Power Noodles. And I basically just followed that recipe because I didn't, I, at the time I didn't know how to like show how to, cook something like I didn't know how to do recipe development 
So I just copied that video, or I copied that recipe, but I just like did a video about it. And it got well received by my friend, family friends, because you know, for the video, I don't have followers at the time. Um, it got really well received by family and friends, and um, there were people who found the video and really liked it. But I look back at that video, you can go, it's still on my YouTube channel. It's really cringe because I obviously did not know how to edit, I didn't know how to talk, stuff like that. Um, I still find it really cringe because it definitely is not was not me. I was trying to be someone else with the way I talked, with the way I like presented the recipe. I definitely didn't find myself or like find what I was good at yet. So, but it's there. It's it's super cringe, at least for me when I look at it. Did that on and off, but then um, I moved to LA shortly after, and I had to do a full time job. And so I didn't have enough time to do that. And I, so I basically quit making content until the pandemic. And then when the pandemic happened, uh, TikTok started being popular. So I started uploading on TikTok. And at first I was just making food. I didn't really, ha I didn't really go back to the niche yet. It wasn't until um, I really got into Food Wars again. So I, I was into Food Wars before, but during the pandemic, I got back into Food Wars. And I was like, oh, I used to make videos about this. Let me do it again. And then that's how it all started. And then eventually Genshin Impact came out. And when the Genshin Impact came out, I started making Genshin food. And I go on and off. I do like anime food, I do video games food, I do random food, I do everything nowadays, I just cook. What are your plans for content or the future of your channel? Honestly, I don't have any plans. This is like making content or is, making content is not a full-time thing for me. I don't make enough money where I could like live off of this completely. It's honestly just an excuse for me to explore culinary skills, challenge myself and try to make new things. Specifically with um, the Genshin stuff lately, a lot of the Genshin stuff are, from, are based off of regions. Um, and these are regions I normally would not eat on a daily basis or cook on a daily basis. So it's nice to have a reason to challenge myself and to cook stuff from other regions and other cultures. I think it's really fun. But yeah, this is like honestly just a side thing for me that to give me a reason to cook. Because when I'm not making videos and I'm just cooking for myself, I kind of just stick to like my normal stuff. Like I'll make like rice and some sort of meat dish and rice. I'll make like noodles, stuff like or pasta, stuff like that. I, I kind of actually do really basic things nowadays when I'm just cooking for myself. As for the future of the channel, well, I don't, I actually haven't paying attention, but TikTok is supposed to get banned at some point. So if that happens, I don't know. My YouTube definitely is a lot smaller than my, my TikTok. So I don't know. I'm just going to keep uploading just for fun. But if there ever gets to the point where like financially I can't afford to do those videos on top of like my cooking and stuff like that. I don't know. I might stop. Who knows? But that also leads into the next question I see, which is if you blew up, like as if you became like really, really popular, what would you want to do? Um, I would say first is I want to increase the quality of my videos, um, both in editing and recording. So right now I just, I just use my phone. Although phones nowadays are really good camera quality, but I just use my phone uh, to record. And normally I don't do I don't speak to it like this. Normally I do voiceovers at my computer, but I would like to do more of these like talking, especially while I'm cooking. I would like to do that. And if I did do that, I would probably have to have a better setup, not a better setup, but like a more well thought out setup. If I want to like talk to the camera while cooking. The reason why I don't talk while cooking is because a lot of times when I'm cooking, there's a lot of background noise. So it's not ideal. I don't have like a quiet space like I do right now. So it's not ideal. That's why I do voiceovers. Even back then, when I first started, I started doing voiceovers because it was just um, so loud. I, I lived in LA at the time and there was always like background noise um, while I was cooking and stuff like that. I would have to like record at night if I wanted it to be quiet. So I just started doing voiceovers and I just stuck with it to this day. So that would be step one, just increase the quality, right? Step two would, um, specifically for like my uh, recreations, like my Genshin stuff, I would like to be a lot more visually accurate. So I think one of my main strengths of my Genshin cooking nowadays is that I try to be as accurate in terms of the 
process, like the cooking process and stuff like that. If it's if the Genshin dish is based off a specific region, regional dish, I try to be as accurate. I do my research, stuff like that. If there's a specific method, I try to be as accurate and recreate that as well. Same with like flavors, seasonings, um, stuff like that. I try to be as accurate as possible to the best of my ability and like what I have around me and stuff like that in my kitchen. But I would say where I'm lacking is visually. I don't have like a lot of different variety of plates or bowls, stuff like that. Um, there is one YouTube YouTuber that I follow and I actually draw a lot of inspiration from, especially when I first started coming back to Genshin uh, food, and that is Mor Morris Kitchen. I think, I think that's their name. They are so good when it comes to being visually accurate. I think I watched some of their videos and they like have, uh, they like print out the design, they like draw it out and print it out. I think that's a really cool concept. And I think like eventually I'll have to get to that point. I just don't make enough money on this on these channels in order to like merit me going all out for that at the moment. Would be cool though. I think it'd be really fun. I think it would add a lot to my strengths of being like culinary accurate, you know? And the final thing, which I would like, if um if I ever like blew up is I would like to partner with Hoyoverse to do a pop-up. Maybe not like me alone, but me and other culinary content creators. It'd be cool to do like a, a pop-up restaurant where we do Genshin food at like one of I don't know if they do Hoyo fairs or whatever it's called in America. I know they do in Asia. But it'd really be really cool if we had a pop-up at some point and I could be a part of that. I think it'd be really cool. Um, I know I'm not on Hoyo's Raider at any point right now, but it would be really cool. Those are pretty much all the questions that I saw and answered. If I missed any or if you have any questions, please let me know. I would be more happy to do a part two or just respond to them if they're um, pretty easy to respond to. Hope that everyone enjoyed this video and, and there will be plenty of more recipes and cooking down the line. So I appreciate everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.